In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have x squared plus the quantity x over x minus 1 squared equals 8. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. For my first method, I want to square the top and the bottom. And then make a common denominator. Now, if you go ahead and expand, you're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then distribute to x squared. We have another x squared. And then cross multiply these while expanding the same thing. Let's distribute. And combine like terms. Now let's put everything on the same side to make this a full cortic. Okay, we combined these two terms because they are like terms. And now we got a full cortic, right? How do you solve a cortic equation? Good question, right? Is there a cortic formula? Yes, there is. There's actually a couple ways to go about it. First step would be getting rid of x cubed. And to do that, you need to replace x with something. Let's say something like y plus. So you basically take the opposite of the coefficient of x cubed and divide it by the degree of the polynomial. So in this case, replacing x with y plus 1 half, you will get rid of the cubic term. You're going to get a polynomial in y with y to the fourth, but there will not be any y cubed. And once you get that, suppose you got something like this, let's say y to the fourth plus a y squared plus b y plus c. Notice that the y cubed is missing. You can go ahead and leave the y to the fourth alone and put everything on the same side, everything else. And then you're going to be adding something to both sides. I'm not doing the work here, so that's probably going to take some time to do. You can do it. I just want to show you the idea, the method for solving, uh, one of the methods for solving quartic equations. So we want to add something to both sides to make the left-hand side a perfect square. So we can add something like this. y to the fourth plus 2ky squared plus k squared. We'll make this a perfect square, don't you think? It will become y squared plus k quantity squared. Of course, we don't want to make it a perfect square uh, in any form, but in this particular way, okay? And of course, what you added needs to be added on the right-hand side as well. And when you rearrange the terms, you're going to get something like this. The left-hand side is a perfect square. The right-hand side, you can kind of put the coefficients together. And then you have this. And then finally, you have that. So the right-hand side is a quadratic and it needs to be a perfect square as well, right? So how do you make this a perfect square? The discriminant needs to be zero, okay? What's the discriminant? B squared minus four A and C. Of course, in this case, you know the values of A, B, C. So the only unknown is K. You're going to get a cubic in K. K cubed is gonna come up, right? And then you can solve that cubic. To solve the cubic, there's, again, a couple different ways to do it. There's a trigonometric way. There's a uh, Italian way. I guess you could call it Cardano, Ferrero, Tartaglia, whoever you want to believe in, you know, that came up with the formula. And then go from there. But you probably notice this is super duper painful, right? And that's the point for the first method. Okay, no pain, no gain. So let's go ahead and talk about the second method, which is usually better. And let's rewrite the equation. Notice that this equation is special. How is it special? We can use substitution. And what is the reasoning behind it? To make our lives easier. Substitution should help you. It makes things worse, 
then you're doing the wrong thing. Either substitution is, does not apply or you're using it incorrectly. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and call this thing Y. And you're like, why? When you do that, you're going to get a system of equations, which might look more complicated, but it actually simplifies the process. You'll see in a little bit how. Let's go ahead and cross multiply here. X equals XY minus Y. Let's put the X and Y on the same side. X plus Y equals XY. Nice. Let's go ahead and save this. Now we do need another equation and that comes from substituting y for x over x minus 1. If you just think about it, this should give you x squared plus y squared equals 8. Nice. Now look at this. We have two equations and two variables, but it's much, much better than the original one, don't you think? Especially if you're good with identities, and you should be, if you watched my channel, videos on my channel, you should definitely know these tricks because we talk about these a lot, okay? And here's what we're going to do. Given the first equation contains x plus y and xy, we're going to try to write the second equation using those as our tools. There's gonna be, they're going to be the building blocks, basically. Make sense? Okay, here's how it goes. x squared plus y squared can be written as x plus y squared minus 2xy. And that's equal to 8, as you know, right? That follows from the second equation. Now, the first equation is super helpful because look at that. x plus y is the same thing as xy. So it's totally up to you whether you replace x plus y with xy or vice versa. doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and replace x plus y with xy, kind of like the, uh, the, the way it's attributed or assigned, I guess. So this gives us xy squared minus 2xy. Okay, how am I going to solve this equation? There's two variables, right? But again, substitution to the rescue. Let's go ahead and set xy equal to p for product. And if you want, you can call x plus y s for sum. Okay? So from here, we get p squared minus 2p. I'm not going to say not. You get the idea, okay? Equals 8. So how do you solve this? Sometimes it just doesn't work. 2c is fine, but this one uh, doesn't sound right. So anyways, you get the idea minus 8 equals 0. And now we can factor this into p minus 4, p plus 2. Hopefully you know how to do this trick. Equals 0. You just find two numbers whose product is negative 8, whose sum is negative 2. And now you go from there. From here, we get p equals 4 or p equals negative 2. But what is p? p is xy. But remember, x, y, and x plus y are the same. So if x, y is 4, x plus y is also 4. Nice. If x, y is negative 2, x plus y is also negative 2. So how do you build an equation from these? Well, Vieta's formulas this time. You see, we use a lot of identities, formulas, tricks. That's why you have to have these in your toolbox, okay? So Vieta's formula says, if you know the sum and the product, of the roots, you can build the equation. And here's how it goes. Let's just use another variable to make it easier. You can basically build an equation whose roots are x and y like this. The sum goes here with the minus sign because remember, the sum of the roots is negative b over a, and in this case, a happens to be a one, and product is c over a. That's why it works like this. And if you uh, wanna really see like, is this a quadratic equation? And the answer is yes, let me show you. This is quadratic in T. Make sense? But X and Y are the roots, so it's kind of like a weird way to express it, but this is probably better than using X or Y because you could also use X instead of T or Y because they are the roots and they will satisfy the equation. But let's not get into that because they will satisfy for sure, right? And uh, So what do we do? We replace x plus y and xy with those values. Let's just start with the first pair. We get t squared minus 4t plus 4 equals 0. As you know, this is t minus 2 squared equals 0. And from here, we get t equals 2. And if t is 2, x and y are both 2. Get the idea? They're both 2. That's it. Done. Great. Now, 
The second equation is going to be formed by t squared minus x plus y is negative 2, so that's going to turn into a plus 2t plus 2 equals 0. Uh-oh, we don't get real solutions, but that's okay. We can write this as follows, and then from here t plus 1 becomes plus minus i, and t becomes negative 1 plus minus i. But what is t? t is x or y. So if x is negative 1 plus i, y is negative 1 minus i, and vice versa. Of course, they can switch around as well. Okay? Did I include anything? Like no graph? Sorry about that. I was in a rush. Wanted to get this done because I have something important coming up. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.